All right, we're looking at unit three, entry two, the physical and chemical properties of matter. So last unit, or sorry, last entry, we talked about uh, how do we classify matter as elements or compounds, pure substances or mixtures. Um, down here, we have an example of a chemical reaction. This arrow means that a chemical reaction is occurring. So I start with what we call reactants, in this case, methane and oxygen, and they react to make carbon monoxide and water. This is a classic combustion reaction. So this is a compound, CH4. O2 is an element, CO2 is a compound, water is a compound. And what I have is a mixture of reactants that produce a mixture of products. Let's look at another reaction. So over here I have a molecule of hydrogen, a molecule of oxygen, and a molecule of hydrogen. So that's an element, that's an element, and that's an element. I have a mixture of two elements. Those would be actually gases at room temperature. A chemical reaction occurs and I get two molecules of water creating a pure substance. So in this case, I had a mixture producing a different, a mixture of different compounds. And here I had a, um, <coughs> bless me, uh, a mixture of elements creating a pure substance, a compound. So as we're talking about these substances, we look at the diversity of elements and, and they have some things in common, hydrogens and oxygens and so forth. But in general, each compound, whether it's an element or compound or each chemical, has different properties. And the properties that they have fall into two categories, physical or chemical. Physical properties describe the characteristics of a substance and not how it reacts. So these are some physical properties over here. We have color, shape, mass, volume, density, texture, magnetism, length, or state of matter, such as solid, liquid, gas, or plasma. Um, all those are examples of physical properties. And here's uh, some more here as well. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on that. Chemical properties describe how a substance's composition or identity will change under a specific set of conditions. So we would say that based on this reaction, I'll come back to it, that uh, methane is combustible okay, that's that's a chemical property it describes how methane will react under a certain set of conditions um, other chemical properties are flammability whether or not it's toxic corrosive and so forth and something to note right down here these are both two chemical reactions why don't you think what is the evidence of chemical change that i see in each of these reactions because each one has a specific one. Here I get bubbles or gas forming, and here I see fire, which is evidence of energy being released. Um, and here's a few more chemical properties as well. And some of these aren't things that we'll talk about, but will come into play later in your careers. So every substance has its own physical and chemical properties, and when these conditions change, the properties may or may not change. For example, I have, I'm sitting at a wood table right now. If it gets uh, to 100 degrees outside, it's gonna stay a wood table. It's not gonna change states of matter. But if I have an ice cube, and it goes from freezing, or like zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, it's gonna change from a solid to a liquid to a gas. So some of its properties, although in that case, a physical property will change. And if I take my wood table and I heat it to 10,000 degrees Celsius, it's going to burn up, right? It's going to, it's going to change chemically. So physical change uh, is a change that occurs when matter changes form without changing properties. So physical changes do not change the identity of a substance and physical changes only affect the physical properties. As an example, I go from melting solid to liquid to gas. It's all water. but it's in a different form, a different state of matter. The properties are still the same. So basically you're asking a question, is it the same thing I started with? And common ones, like when you're forming mixtures like water and sand, you're like, are they, did they form new compounds? No, it's still water and sand, they're just mixed together. Um, one thing to note is that dissolving is always a physical change. Uh, the molecules themselves do not change. So here you have a solid and you see the water molecules kind of coming and ripping it apart. That's what happens when it's dissolving um, a solid into a liquid in that case. But you might be like, well, it's separated. Like that's a, that's a chemical bond. Look at the way the water surrounded those 
uh, positively charged cations and those negatively charged anions. But mixtures can be separated by, based on their physical properties, right? So as an example, if I had water and salt, just like I had before, and I evaporated the water, so boil it away, the solid would reform. So think about going the opposite direction of this. You have everything separated, the water molecules go away, and those positive and negative compound or atoms find each other again, forming a solid left behind. So we would say that uh, evaporation is a physical or a way to separate properties or uh, compounds based on physical properties. Regardless of whether it's a chemical or physical change, note that the law of conservation of mass applies, that matter cannot be created or destroyed, but it's always conserved. So if I have a, a five kilogram log or 5,000 gram log and 200 grams of oxygen in the air and I burn it, they combine to get 5,200 grams of products. Now you'd be like, well, when I burn a log, there's only a tiny amount of ash left. That's true. But one of the major components of a combustion reaction is carbon dioxide. So that means that a bunch of the gas is produced and released. And then that gas goes into the atmosphere. Similarly, if I have two grams of Kool-Aid powder and 100 grams of water and I mix them, I'll get a mass of 102. And that's the conservation of mass. So a chemical change results in a change in the identity of a substance. Examples would be burning, rusting, digesting, decomposing. So the new substances have different properties. So in both of these images here, we have examples of chemical reactions occurring. You could think of this being like, um, you see how the green uh, attach and then detach, you end up with one red and two blues, like water, and then something left over here. That's an example of a reaction. I get new compounds, new bonds are made, new bonds are broken. It's not blue to green anymore. Now it's red to blue and then green to green. So new bonds are formed, new bonds are released or created. And here I got blue and green only bonded to each other. At the end I have blues and greens bonded. So new bonds are made. So the results of chemical change is always new substances. And the evidence is, and this is a major piece for us to get into our brains, is color change, that's one evidence. Bubble formation or gas formation is actually what that is. Energy change, and energy can come in the form of temperature, light, or sound, and a formation of a solid. Okay, so make sure you get those down. We're gonna summarize it here on the next page. So physical changes, again, don't impact the identity of a substance. For example, melting ice, it only affects the physical properties. So if I chop wood, it's still wood. But if I burn wood, I get several evidence of chemical change. I get a color change. It goes from brown to black. I get energy change. I can feel the heat. I can see the light being released. And I also get gas formation, even though I can't see it. But if we had somehow a layer of liquid above the fire, you'd be able to see the carbon dioxide and water vapor forming. So the main idea here is that compounds can be broken down through chemical changes, and some of them form elements, some form simpler substances, sometimes they form more complex substances. So if you were to look at this reaction, what evidence of chemical change can you see? You should be able to see gas forming up here with the smoke. You should see uh, light being given off. And you imagine that's probably hot to the touch. Those are some, um, generally speaking, uh, simple chemical identity um, pieces to look at. And last, we're going to talk about density, which is a physical property. It's a relationship between mass, which is the amount of matter in grams, and volume, the amount of space milliliters and every substance has a unique density. So if I have a gas here, I have a 1.23293 grams, one liter. I take that divided by a thousand, I get a really low density. But if I decrease the volume, my density would go up because the particles are closer together. So it's a reflection of the amount of stuff. Here the amount of stuff doesn't change, but the amount of space it takes up does. And there's a lot of really cool behavior of gases, things that we'll look at next week that relate to how clouds form, the weather patterns that we see, all that type of information. 
Solids are also measured in cubic centimeters, which is length times width times height. But one thing to know is that one milliliter of liquid has a density or volume of one cubic centimeter. So density, again, is a physical property, amount of stuff in space. Here, the volume is the same. You'd say which of these has a higher density. It would be the one on the left because it has more stuff in it. So we have this equation. It says write it down, but the triangle is already on your notes. So it's mass divided by volume. And we're going to look at how we... Um, how we measure this. So what is mass measured in? If you remember from the previous slide, it is in grams. Volume is usually in milliliters or cubic centimeters. So if we had two units for density, they would be grams per milliliter and grams per cubic centimeter. Because you imagine mass up here is grams. Volume is milliliters or cubic centimeters. Grams divided by is what I see right here as a reflection for my units. So a big key for getting these problems right is identifying the units that are being used. Last thing we're gonna talk about today is that density, uh, often for irregularly shaped objects, is measured with displacement. So if I had a volume of 40 and I put this object in and it went up to 60, which obviously the graduated cylinders are not correctly labeled here, um, then I would have an increase of 20. So I'd know the volume of that is 20 milliliters. So let's look at two examples here and talk about how to solve them. So we have our density triangle, I have density, I have mass, and I have volume. Okay? This is an extremely important part of the process. So here's mass of 10 grams, volume of five cubic centimeters. I have mass and volume, which means I'm solving for density. If I were to cover up density, I would get M over V, and that would be the equation that I would use. So density is equal to M over V, and I'd get 10 grams over five cubic centimeters. And my answer would become two grams per cubic centimeter. And that would be my density. Here, I have a density of two grams per milliliter and a mass of 10 grams. So what's its volume? If I solve for volume, I'd get M over D. So volume is equal to mass over density. I plug in my mass of 10 grams, my density of two grams per milliliter. Notice that grams is gonna cancel out here. So the units that I would get, 10 divided by two, is five milliliters for the volume. Um, so now you're just using your density triangle to answer these problems. So like right here, I got a density and I got a mass. So that means I'm solving for volume. Okay, here I have a mass and a volume, I'm solving for density. Mass and a volume, solving for density. I have a mass and a volume, I'm solving for density. Here I have mass, volume, density. Uh, maybe I copied in the wrong problems here. Yeah, there we go. Um, I got a volume and a mass, I got density. I got volume and mass, I got a density. Um, and then you have a density problem. Which one's gonna float? And then lastly, you have a, a piece of physical and chemical properties. So you're gonna go through and, and look, what is density? Density is a physical property, so I'm gonna put PP. How do I know? It uh, is a physical um, representation of that object. So you could describe it, it's a characteristic, right? So it's gonna be characteristic or reaction. Characteristic, basically. Um, flammability, this is gonna be a chemical property because it describes how it reacts. And so you're gonna go through and you're basically gonna label each of these as physical or chemical, and it's either gonna be a characteristic or a reaction piece to them. This one should hopefully be like a dead giveaway to you. Okay. Uh, next, you got a physical or chemical change, and how do you know? It dissolves in water. That's a chemical change, CC, because it's dissolving. Remember, dissolving is always a physical change. Acid reacts with base, well, physical change, I get new compounds. It says water and a salt. New substances. Okay, something like that. And you're just going to go through and do the rest of these as well. And uh, we'll look at the key tomorrow. All right, guys, love you, appreciate you. Have a great day.